Hey there guys, Tom here, welcome back to my movie channel and thank you very much for joining me for this, my review of the final episode of season 2 of The Mandalorian, The Rescue. This video will be all spoilers, so if you haven't seen the final episode yet, and I, I assume most of you have or you wouldn't be watching a review, but just in case you haven't, I'm going to go into spoilers in this video. So if you haven't seen Mandalorian yet, go watch the episode, come back and watch this review after you've seen the episode because it is fucking awesome. So Mandalorian, the season finale, The Rescue. This episode was great. I enjoyed this episode greatly. I still, I don't think this episode's my favorite, but it is certainly a very good episode. So we start off, we have Mando and the crew. We have Boba Fett, Cara Dune, Fennec Shan. They're flying and they capture Dr. Pershing. They're chasing his Imperial um, shuttle and they capture Dr. Pershing and he's able to help lead them to where Moff Gideon's cruiser is. But of course, they make a stop and they get Bo-Katan and Sasha Banks' character and, and then in a bar, which ensues then into a fight between Boba Fett and Bo-Katan. And I love that exchange because all season I've been thinking, if they're going to bring Bo-Katan back into this season, her and Boba Fett are going to have some issues because Boba Fett ain't a Mandalorian. Well, at least, you know, according to most Mandalorians and certainly to Bo-Katan's former Prime Minister, Prime Minister Olmac, Bo Boba Fett is not a Mandalorian. But let's get into the meat of the episode. So they get to the cruiser and they've got to infiltrate this cruiser. So you have the, the four girls, you've got Bo-Katan, you've got Fennec, Cara Dune, and Sasha Banks. They're taking up stormtroopers left, right, and center. There's some great interplay and and great uh, humor between them, which I thought was really funny, like the moment where Cara Dune's gun jams up. I thought that was quite funny, and they're taking out stormtroopers left and right. And meanwhile, Din is trying to get to Grogu, but he also, on the way to get Grogu, has to stop the dark troopers from getting out of there because they're going to kill everybody. So he has a fight with a dark trooper and he manages to trap the rest of them and then send them out of the airlock. Now, at first I thought that's a little anticlimactic, but we'll, they come back, obviously. So then we get a, a scene where we have an awesome fight between Din Djarin and Moff Gideon. And that fight was awesome. It was just... I think it was just a perfect fight. I knew watching this episode, I knew I'm like, Moff Gideon is not going to give up the child that easily. But this show has surprised me before. And I was thinking this show might surprise me again. And he might just let Din take the child. And then we might get some other surprise later. But no, of course he wasn't going to let him take the child. He fought him with the dark saber. And that fight was awesome. Then the next scene, of course, we get to Din Djarin coming back into the bay with Moff Gideon. And I'm like, it can't be that easy, can it? Surely, like... <laughs> and then we get the reveal <laughs> that Moff Gideon says when Din goes to give the, the Darksaber back to Bo-Katan, Moff Gideon goes, uh, actually, for her to claim that and for her to claim her place on the Mandalorian throne, she's got to beat you in hand-to-hand -hand combat which was an interesting little twist that they threw in there. So, And obviously, they didn't clear that up. So I don't know what's going to happen in Season 3. But let's just get to the, the real crux of the episode here, because this is something that I do want to talk about a little bit at length here. So just bear with me, because I do have some thoughts about this specific thing. So the Dark Troopers are trying to break through the blast doors. So the Dark Troopers are breaking, trying to break through this blast door. And then all of a sudden we see a hooded figure on the security camera walk through. And I thought, right, this is Ahsoka Tano. I know they said she was only going to be in one episode, but I thought, nah, they're bringing back Ahsoka. Ahsoka's going to rescue him. Then we cut to uh, it not being the security camera, and there's a green fucking lightsaber, and it's Luke motherfucking Skywalker! Here's the thing about Luke. Uh, you know, people have been wanting to see Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian, like, oh, Luke's going to come and take the child. And I thought, I have a, I have a bit of a a little bit of a gripe with that because first of all I didn't want Luke Skywalker in the Mandalorian I, I just I just didn't want it I didn't want that much of a connection like that significant of a connection between the Skywalker saga and the Mandalorian now I know Ahsoka was a big connection a direct connection to the Skywalker saga but she was a little bit you know a little bit separated from that so having Luke himself show up I I, I really wasn't a fan 
of the idea of having Luke Skywalker show up. And I still don't, I'm still not okay with Luke showing up. That being said, it was fucking awesome. Like, I, not to mince words here, I don't, I didn't want it. I still don't want it. I still don't like the idea that Luke took the child and left. I don't like that at all. But let's get one thing straight. Luke Skywalker showing up and wrecking dark troopers and just going to town and and schooling some fools with that lightsaber and, and the force and oh my god. It was awesome. And then of course you have R2-D2 showing up, which is a nice touch. But the thing with Luke coming up and taking Grogu away from the Mandalorian, there's two problems I have with this. Number one, Luke taking the child to train him as a Jedi, surely that only ends one way, right? Because eventually, a few years down the line from now, Luke Skywalker is going to have this moment where he's going he's gonna to go, hey, Grogu, I'd like you to meet my nephew, Ben Solo. And we all know what happens when Ben Solo hits that Jedi temple, and we all know what he does to Luke's temple. I know it's like years and years and years away, but still, if Grogu's there, and that's a big if, if Grogu's still at the temple at that point, Grogu dead. Sorry. By the way, the CGI on the the deep fake Mark Hamill, I thought looked great for a Disney Plus show. Like on a you know, I mean, The Mandalorian is more expensive than most other TV shows, but still, I think you know, if it was a movie made for the big screen for a theatrical release, that CGI on on Mark Hamill would have been a lot better. But the deep fake look, I thought, looked pretty good for what they needed it for. He didn't move his face too much. He didn't change facial expressions. It did look a little bit stiff, but I can forgive that. But my concern really is that can this show like the Mandalorian from that end of the first episode of the first season, this show has been about the child. It's been the baby Yoda show for two entire seasons now. And we have gone so attached to the bond between the Mandalorian and the child. And I really didn't think that they would just have a Jedi come in, take the child and that would be it. Now, I don't know whether they're going to have the child reunite with Din again I highly, highly doubt it. If you bring in Luke Skywalker to, to take the child, I think that's the end of that story. I don't think we're going to see the child again. But can this show work without the main MacGuffin of the show? Without the main... Forget MacGuffin for a second. The main star of the show is Grogu. That is, like, that character single-handedly brought in, and I know per people personally, brought in people as fans of uh, new fans of Star Wars who wouldn't give a second thought to Star Wars before and then they saw images of the child and they said oh yeah I need to I need to see what that's all about and now they're hooked and now they're into Star Wars so I just don't know if this show is going to work as well as it has been as far as from an emotional point of view when you have Din without the child how is that going to work what are they going to do with that I don't know but it is a big concern of mine. And listen, I, again, I'm, I'm not happy with the fact that Luke Skywalker showed up. I didn't want that deep of a connection to the, the Skywalker saga with the Mandalorian. I want them to keep expanding the Star Wars universe, not constantly having to shrink it and always bring it back to the Skywalker saga. We have to have a Luke Skywalker show up. We have to have a Darth Vader show up in order for this to be Star Wars. Eh. So again, I'm, I'm not really happy with Luke showing up, but I I can't lie, the scene was fucking awesome. But let's talk about one of the softer moments of the show, one of the better moments in the show, and the moment that we we're all waiting for, which was when they're saying goodbye, which I thought they did handle pretty well. I, I, I thought they handled that good with, with the child saying goodbye to the Mandalorian. The moment where Baby Yoda touches the helmet and Mando realizes, I have to show him my face, you know, at least once, and he takes off the helmet. They had a really nice little moment there, and and I, I I really appreciate that they did that. This episode was good. I enjoyed this episode. I have no idea where they're going for season three, uh, because with Luke showing up and taking the child away, now the the you have a clean slate for season three. There's no real cliffhanger left, is there? Really, aside from maybe going to Mandalore and like Din going with Bo-Katan to Mandalore, I maybe. 
Uh, I, I don't know where they're going to go for season three. I'm still very excited for season three. I can't wait. It'll be Christmas next year by the time we get it, but I'm very excited for it nonetheless. So I want to know what you guys think of this episode. Make sure you jump down in the comment section below and let me know what you thought of the Mandalorian, the season finale. I enjoyed it. I have mixed feelings on Luke Skywalker. I know a lot of you guys wanted to see him and that's great. I'm glad that he's there for the people that wanted him to be there. And I know that's going to make a lot of people happy. But I want to know what you guys have to think. So make sure you jump down in the comment section below and let me know what you think right down there. Thank you very much for watching my Mandalorian reviews over the last eight weeks. It's been a lot of fun. Look out for more reviews coming soon. The next review I'll be doing is, of course, Wonder Woman 1984. So look out for that. Thank you very much for watching, guys. My name is Tom. And as always, this is the way.